Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Try to get this thing correct. This is going to be the first video, Lord willing, of many to come on this tablet. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. So we're going to go over a few things and trying to finish up on what? What is it? What is it that I've been sharing with you? Okay. Is it about the tribulation? No. Is it about the wrath and judgments of God? No. It's about the teachings that Jesus gave to us concerning the early and the latter rain and the fact that he would come as the Son of Man to find faith. I believe that there is an end time ministry called the man-child ministry of whom goes forth in the finishing of the Messiah's week, the last three and a half years, the same 42 months of which the woman in the book of Revelation is taken off to a secret place for 42 months to be fed. And the feeding, I believe, is the ministry of which I speak of. It's not a revival. It's the resurrected body of Christ on the third day, that type of which Jesus' literal body was raised, we too go through a death, burial, and resurrection individually and collectively. And this is the collective resurrection or restoration of the body of Christ, the church. It's the refiner's fire and you shall be baptized in water and spirit and fire. And fire. I believe that's the refiner's fire. First, I want to go to Psalms 23 5. Amen, Jesus. And uh, we're going to look at, praise God. All right. This might be a little bit more difficult than I thought. Oh, this is one thing I did not anticipate. Okay, I'm going to let you go to Psalms 23, 23, 5, all right? And it talks about God setting a table for us from before our enemies. Also in 91, 7 through 16, it refers to the falling down of a thousand to the left and ten thousand to the right, but not one hair upon your head shall be destroyed, okay? They'll be harmed. I looked for the other parable of the virgins. Couldn't find it. I know it exists there. It may have been written differently in another version of the Word of God, but it specifically talks about them being awakened by a commotion in the marketplace. This is not the first time that I know I have read Scripture regarding something that when you go to try to look it up through Bible Gateway or some other, it's because it's so rarely searched out for that it doesn't even register on their um, references. So it's happened before, it'll happen again. I know it exists. Uh, but we will go to the Binding of the Tares, Matthew 13, 30 through 32, because I have that in my Jesus Only book. The problem I'm having right now is, unfortunately, the tablet is laying right in front of the screen. I'm using the screen of my laptop to hold the tablet up and uh, that blocks my ability to be able to write in to Google the Bible Gateway to find these verses so I can read them to you. But I've got Matthew 13 right here somewhere. One, two, 18, we're getting close, 16, 15, all right. 13, 30 through 32. So, 
Finding of the tares is supposed to be 1332. Ooh, not bad. Okay. Here it says, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that cause stumbling, and them that do inequity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Why am I not finding the gathering, first gather the tears into the barn? I apologize. Should double check to see. Oh, wait a minute. Here it is. Let both grow together. This is a saith me. Ah, okay. 13, 24 through 30. Kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the blade sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. And the servants of the house order came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? Whence then hath the tares? And said unto him, An enemy hath done this. And the servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? And he saith, Nay, least haply while ye gather up the tares, ye root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather up first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, to gather the wheat into my barn. So I want you to see this in its spiritual interpretation of the sending forth of the messengers, the angels, the workmen of the uh, last hour of the day. We've established that in other videos, where in the parable of the workmen who are sent out into the field, there's a certain number of them that come, and they all match in order with the periods of time in which God sent forth his messengers, his people, to do a work in the field, all right, and that we get down to what is five o'clock in our Julian or our, our clock, but it's actually the 11th hour in the Jewish clock. Of a day and that's the 11th hour of which he sends in the last gatherers and then there's a big to do about them getting paid the same price the same amount that everybody else did but that's not what the parable is about it's to show us that at the last hour of the day for the last period of time just before the catching up into a secret place either under an anointing in the third heaven Okay, whatever, an ark, a barn, the banquet hall, call it what you want. We're gathered together in it, but first the tares are bound hand and foot. And when they do that, Jesus is here as the Son of Man seeking for faith. Because he's the one who opens the door, who will open the door, and he is the one who returns and closes that door. He's the one standing there with them. Go for me, you doers of inequity, I knew you not. Okay, it's the voice of the many waters, the ministry of the man child. And that's what I believe people are not seeing, and the reason between the foolish and the wise is because when it says vessels, again, I will have to depend on you going to that until I figure out a better way to set up this tablet. Um, you can find that we are earthen vessels. That's 2 Corinthians 4, 7. And then I want you to look at the, the baptism, Matthew, more, Matthew 3, 11. It has to do with 
the baptism of the water and spirit. Okay, baptizing spirit and fire. Amen, Jesus. Okay, so I'm I'm looking at that as the end, which comes in the end. Okay, just like Jesus is the author and finisher, beginning and end. All right, of the church age. All right, and with that there is an and fire, and you shall be saved as if by fire. Okay. Uh, again, Jesus' ministry in the literal is a type of that which would come to us spiritually. So again, I reemphasize the fact that collectively we go through a death, burial, and resurrection, and the church is about to be resurrected, restored. Another story that is similar to this, which I believe is the same one, is when the prophet falls upon the bones, the dead men's bones, in the grave, all right, they give they are given new muscle, new sinew, okay, and they rise up out of the grave. Okay. Um, he is also a part of the natural seed as the son of man, David, uh, from the line of David. Therefore, his ministry is a type of the spiritual ministry of the man child of them uh, of the many waters many sons, his brothers and sisters in the Lord. This has been kind of a short one, mainly because I couldn't use the laptop to read these out to you. So I'm really depending on you guys to look them up for yourself. Amen? Uh, it's not as, you know, we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time on a few other things. Amen, Jesus. There's, these events are getting so close to to take begin to start to take place, that uh, I'm almost at the end of what my ministering will do uh, any good, uh, because the time has come that uh, that awakening, Amen, Jesus, spiritually speaking, needs to take place, and uh, rather, as I've said, it's a commotion in the marketplace because God shakes both heaven and earth, and I believe that's a sign to us. That not only in these households of faith of which he begins to judge, all right, the suffering, the wheat from the tear, or the tear out, binding them, which I've suggested could be that coming together of the evangelic right and man and his governments. Okay, another picture of the crusade, same thing took place. They want to rise up in their arms of flesh, okay, and we're not to do that, all right? So, um, I don't really have much else to say. Uh, things have been kind of hectic for me. Um, with everything else with the laptop or the tablet, trying to get that set up and hoping that it, it stays running for a video, which we're definitely going to find out today. Uh, that and I've had some personal financial matters I've had to deal with uh, that has really distracted me a lot. And when I get distracted by a lot of things in the natural world, okay, um, be it my health, I've had some issues with my health, sinus infection, ear infection, you know, just a mess. And um, so when I when I get a lot of that going on, uh, I don't know for you guys, but it's hard, okay, to put that all out. If it were things like, oh, watching TV, going to movies, going out and pleasing myself uh, among the things of the world, well, there's no excuse for that, okay? And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm referring to actual events that you do have to care for as part of your responsibility, okay, uh, while we're here on earth, to honor man and God. So when you have rent to pay or you have issues that you need to deal with, then you need to take time to do them, okay? And uh, as a good servant, okay, of God. So those things, there's been a lot of that this week. I apologize uh, for the last couple of weeks not being out here, but you know, I hope I've kept you abreast of everything that's been going on. I have deleted all the test videos, so if you go back to look for them, they're not going to be there anymore. <laughs> Amen. 
Okay, so uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you in Yeshua's name until the next time. Amen? Amen. Thank you.